Welcome to Broadway, everyone. I'm inside the Broadway Theater, one of the oldest ones that was built in 1903. One of the first ones to pop up here in Times Square. And I just finished watching Aladdin and absolutely loved it. It was based on the Disney movie and musical. And let me show you the theater just a little bit. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts of Aladdin so you can know if it's worth using it. And I'll tell you about an app that I use called Broadway Roulette. So let me show you around the theater. Enjoy it. I tried to do a live video right before um, the performance, but it was a bit too tight. So I'm going to do some justice and take a little bit of sweet time here as long as I can linger to show you the theater. Look how magnificent it is. This is the New Amsterdam Theater, which is one of two haunted theaters in New York City. And let me show you how it looks. George, this place is indeed very haunted. Many years ago at 2.30 a.m., a security guard was wandering around these halls doing his shift. And then suddenly he sees a woman appear in the dead of night. She's wearing a green beaded dress and she's waving at him. She's also clutching a blue bottle, and this is rather disturbing. The security guard gets really freaked out, and he kind of runs away, grabs the phone, calls the VP of um, the Disney theatrical group, which owns the theater since the 1990s, in a panic, saying, I just saw a woman. She's not supposed to be here. She just disappeared into a wall. Well, uh, <laughs> what is the VP to do? They investigate this. Uh, no one's in the theater, but people keep seeing her. A patron came into the theater and saw a woman in a beaded dress and also was free. So let me show you. Stagehands who work behind the scenes also saw the woman in the beaded dress. And let me show you the seats. Comfy seats, but they're pretty small, actually. Um, so it's not the comfiest. And this used to be the site of the Ziegfeld Follies, which was the most extravagant of the early Broadway productions. The Ziegfeld Follies was really responsible for starting Broadway as we know it. I'm going to zoom on the details over here. It's so cool. Let me just see the pit. So here's the pit for all the musicians. This is where they play. Look at that. So this is where the musicians play. It's literally called the pit. And they have full orchestra. By regulation, every Broadway show has to have real music being played. It could be an orchestra like this, it could be a band a la rent, but it always has to have some type of live music. It can never be recorded. No exceptions. That's always the case. So you're guaranteeing good quality. And here's the stage. I always wanted to touch the stage. Oh, there we go. I touched the stage. Now I'm one step closer to being a Broadway star. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, all right. Let me just quickly show you the artifacts and then... Uh, now pop over and we're gonna go outside and discuss a little bit more. So this is Florin Ziegfeld right there who started the Ziegfeld Follies in 1913 here in this very theater. There were a lot of extravagant costumes and women very scantily clad. Some of them went on to be the early stars of Hollywood going on to do silent films. Very interesting. 
And look at this. Wow. Breathtaking detail. And look at these headdresses. So the New Amsterdam Theater actually had a rooftop theater and garden. And at midnight, they had what was called the Midnight Frolics. Where on this main stage that I'm showing you today, there were women who were dressing up very extravagantly with the huge hairdresses, huge peacock feathers and things like that. Uh, even doing ballet, but not in a serious kind of way, in a more uh, show, Broadway showcase kind of way. But upstairs in the Midnight Frolics, they would actually get a lot more scantily clad. They'd be barely wearing anything most of the time, especially later in the night that you would go. And they would light up balloons. They were full of balloons. And the patrons were allowed to pop them, but they had to use their cigars in order to pop them. And look at the wooden details over here. Thank you so much for coming, folks. Thank you so much. Get home safe and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank, Thank you so much. This is the woman, Olive Thomas. Oh. All right, so I had to be a little bit farther away, but I showed you as much as I could of the theater. There's no service downstairs down below, but there was this beautiful peacock uh, headdress down below, which I wish I could have showed you, but there's no cell phone reception. But this is the new Amsterdam theater, and they put the Lion King logo, but I saw Aladdin right there. There it is. I saw Aladdin. Your Broadway wish is granted. So I was mentioning the man, the security guard, who saw the woman in the beaded dress. Well, after that sighting, many other people started seeing a woman in the beaded dress. Stagehands, the guys who work behind the stage, started seeing a woman beaded dress late at night. She would be shining under the lights and then waving at them very flirtatiously and then disappearing off into the walls. This freaked out a lot of the people. And they found, they end up seeing one single pattern. They end up seeing that every person that she appeared to was a man. No woman ever saw the ghost of the New Amsterdam Theater. But who was this? Well, I showed you a portrait that appeared right there. I pointed it out, this woman. That is Olive Thomas. Olive Thomas was one of the Ziegfeld Folly girls who performed here between 1915-ish all the way to about uh, 1917, 1918. And she ended up falling in love with a man called Tom, uh, with a man called Jack Pickford. He was a burgeoning movie star in the silent film era. And his sister, Mary Pickford, was even bigger. They were Hollywood royalty, the very first Hollywood royalty family, along with the Baldwins and the Barrymores and <laughs> a few others out there. The Hemsworth now. Well, they end up eloping over to, uh, well, not eloping, they end up having a honeymoon over at Paris, Jack and Olive. 
Olive, who used to work over here and started doing silent films herself. Mary, the sister of Jack, hated Olive because she came from a very poor background and she thought that Olive was only in it for the clout that the Pickford family had. They have only been for, in Hollywood for a few years, so I think they were overestimating their own clout. Well, one night they end up getting drunk, Olive and Jack. And in their drunken stupor, they go back home. Jack is very tired and wants to go to sleep. Olive can't fall asleep. She has a terrible migraine. She tries to do whatever at night. Apparently she's writing, she's at her desk. And Jack says, just go to sleep already. Take something. So she ends up taking something to cure her migraine and to help her sleep. Which is something that would come in a red bottle. At that time, there were solutions that were, came in powdered form. So she already had a sleeping aid in a red bottle. But right next to this red bottle was a blue one. And the blue one was mercury bichloride. This was much stronger. Same in the same dose. Uh, uh, wait, too much. In the same dose, if you take it, the mercury bichloride will cause serious damage. And she did. She ended up going into a coma, sent immediately to the hospital, and she was in her final dying days. She wasn't going to live beyond the week. She ended up taking the wrong thing in a drunken stupor under the darkness of the room. Olive died. They found out that Jack, the reason he was taking micro, micro, mercury bichloride in this blue bottle was because he most likely had syphilis. And that was the common... You do? <laughs> also bad, thank you. Uh, someone just spotted me. He was taking medication for syphilis. Every time someone sees Olive inside this theater, they end up... I know you, you, you turn oh. it. I oh. see you oh, and awesome. you too. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm actually filming on YouTube right now. Okay. Also, man, have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, they end up seeing... They end up seeing her walk around this theater of New Amsterdam who we just walked through, clutching on the blue bottle. And no, I'm not talking about the coffee brand. Ever since then, there was a meeting that happened, and this is another rumor, no one knows this for sure, but there was a meeting that happened in the offices of the Disney Theatrical Group, which are in the building of the New Amsterdam Theater. And one night they were having a meeting, and of course they were all men, and suddenly the papers started flinging about. So everyone in the company, the stagehands, the people who worked in the offices, and the actors, and the security guards, had a new ritual. They would say to Olive, good night. Good night, Olive. And ever since they started giving her a good night, acknowledging her presence, the hauntings have stopped. But also, according to rumor, they would hire uh, only female uh, security guards. Though that isn't accurate, because I just went tonight and there were actually male security guards. Uh, but there were a few female security guards. So, do you think it's haunted? Have you experienced the haunting in the New Amsterdam Theater? Let me know. But let me tell you my thoughts of uh, Aladdin. Let me just show you a little bit more of the outside. There's a lot of music. Oh, this kind of sucks. Uh, uh, here in Times Square, people are playing too much music. So everyone, I might get copyrighted uh, for this broadcast. Uh, it's hard to... It, um, Dodge music here in, in Times Square. So this is sponsored by the Super Urbanist, patreon.com slash urbanist. Thank you so much for sponsoring this show or on YouTube members or Facebook supporters, uh, patreon.com slash urbanist if you want to support the show. I'll keep doing them uh, despite uh, not being able to make money off some of my episodes afterwards because of music issues that literally come out of nowhere and in droves, at least here in Times Square.
Let me show you the new Amsterdam. Carlos, whether or not you spent the three years. So the new Amsterdam theater is one of the oldest theaters. It stuck out like a sore thumb when uh, Broadway was starting to be built because this was all horse stables. There was really nothing here, just a bunch of uh, horse stables and places where they would make horse carriages and horseshoes and all, everything related to the horse. Uh, it was more of an industrial area with uh, probably the very distinct smell of horse manure. Well, the reason that New Amsterdam decided to build right here was because the subway was going to be constructed right underneath it. That subway ended up opening up in 1904, so this predated it. And it stuck out as a sore thumb, just like one Times Square right over here. The New Amsterdam Theater was a huge hit, and I said, Big Phil Follies played, and they actually had a rooftop garden and theater, which actually ran all the way until about the 1960s or so. Dutch Maws, nice to see you here. Welcome. So look at that beautiful musical so let me know if you want to hear my thoughts about the musical and i'll tell you how i end up getting tickets which was a really cool way so i just saw aladdin i had orchestra seating and i really enjoyed it the broadway <laughs> that seems that woman seems to be a broadway fanatic she's dressed to the nines this is a stranger things store Susie says, yes, I'm waiting. All right. Challenge here in Times Square is you got to find a quiet place. <laughs> Audrey, thank you so much for the 99 cents. I appreciate that. Just let me go to a place where I can chill out a little bit more. Ron says, don't know what's worse, seeing the ghost of Olive or running into... Um, of uh, of uh, horse poo. Yes, indeed. They're both terrible prospects. I don't think seeing the ghost of Olive would be that bad. I mean, she she just seems very nice. She's not she's not an angry ghost by no means. She seems like she has a tough time moving on, but she's not angry by no means. She just flirts with the uh, with the men in the in the theater. I felt a presence. I thought I felt something grasp my behind. Um, I felt like a, a hand on me on my behind during the theater, but I think it was I think it was just might have been a very eager, older patron of the theater. Oh my god, there's so much music. I saw the musical uh, last Saturday. It says Audrey, I'm so glad you did left uh, Audrey. That's so cool. All right, I'm gonna go right over here.
right. <laughs> Head to Beard again. They have very popular music playing. Um, okay. All right. Well, welcome to Times Square, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hectic to the very brim. It's music everywhere, yeah. It is music everywhere. Music fills the streets over here. And there's a beer garden. That's nice. So I ended up using a app called Broadway Roulette. I reached out to them and they were so kind enough to give me a complimentary uh, premium ticket. So the cool thing about this app, and this is not sponsored by them, but I'm shouting them out because it was uh, actually a really fun experience. Uh, because people always ask me how to get cheaper Broadway tickets and I found the way. Uh, but there's a catch. Uh, Broadway Roulette, you have two options, standard seating and premium seating. Standard seating I think is 59 and premium is 89. And standard, you end up getting uh, anything in the mezzanine area, I think. Mezzanine or above. And it's a random seat. Premium is only orchestra. And it's a random seat in the orchestra. I got a premium and I sat in the orchestra with beautiful views of the show. However, there's a catch. Aside from the random seat, there's also a random show. You get to choose whether you want to be randomly chosen a play and or musical, or just a musical. You can choose. And you can eliminate up to four options. I eliminated four of the pop musicals, the musicals that are based on pop music from history. I'm not really into that style. So I eliminated like Tina, Ain't Too Proud, um, the Jersey Boys, and I eliminated like one or more other. Uh, MJ, and I, I really didn't like it too much. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm actually on live video right now. Yeah, you are gonna watch it. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> um, so I eliminated those, and I wanted to do a video of Aladdin because it was a haunted theater. But I actually was hoping, because I was going to go there anyway, I was hoping that I would choose another show. However, shows have been closing down due to everything happening with the pandemic. Kind of sucks. So it gave me Aladdin, and I'm kind of grateful because I ended up killing two birds with one stone and end up doing a TikTok video both about the haunted theater and also the Broadway roulette. So they choose the show randomly and I got great seats right in front. Highly do recommend it. And I, they gave me a promo code, Ariel5. Ariel5, people, I got audience over here. Ariel5, everyone. So put the promo codes in the comments. <laughs> and uh, my thoughts of Aladdin, I actually saw it at the West End. And if you saw my London broadcast, you probably end up really loving my uh, you end up probably seeing my thoughts of Aladdin the first time around. When I saw it, Aladdin in the West End of London, I was very far away. I was all the way in the very top. And it wasn't so uh, good view. But I did enjoy it because I have a lot of nostalgia for Aladdin. It's such a great show, uh, such a great movie. I used to watch it all over, over and over again when I was younger. And seeing it on Broadway, they really did a great adaptation but this time around i was a much closer and seeing it very up close actually does make a big difference so if you do have the budget or you want to do something like broadway roulette then you can um then you can actually see it much more up close if you're going with i think two people i think they'll definitely see you together i'm not sure above two someone could check i think it might be up to four that's the promo code, Area of Love. So the show is amazing. Great translation of Aladdin to Broadway. The reason I think it's extra amazing is because the movie was written by Broadway musical writers. The mu movie is a Broadway musical that was kind of translated to animation. Uh, no, it wasn't on stage first, but it was written that way. Uh, similar to Frozen and similar to The Little Mermaid and similar to... Um, a host of different films like uh, Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King. That's the magic of those uh, 90s Disney movies. 
and I think it translates really well into Broadway. It's very, it's hilarious. It goes by very quickly. It's a shorter show, and um, and I would say the one thing I really did like is how they updated the references. So, as many people might already know from the original movie, the genie actually makes a lot of modern references. He, uh, in the film, he makes references like baseball. He makes references to a few other pop culture things from the 1990s. In this one, they actually update those references. He makes references to two Marvel films, Black Panther and uh, Spider-Man. They actually make a reference to that. And also they make reference to a few other things that are very, very current. So I highly recommend. Watch Aladdin, everyone. Highly, highly recommend it. I'll answer any of your questions about Broadway. I'm going to post a video about the, the experience of going on Broadway, of uh, going to the show and using Broadway Roulette. So use that promo code, Broadway Roulette. It was an awesome time. Thank you so much, Broadway Roulette, for that complimentary ticket. Um, I get to my stamp of approval. It was an easy process, and it was great to get very close up to see a Broadway show. And I will definitely be using it in the future. Darlene says, keep traveling for us. Oh, yes. I, I, I'll do my best. I, uh, the pandemic is getting tough. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen in January. Uh, I'm trying to be optimistic that I'll be able to travel. But what's the name of the fashion documentary? Rise of, Fa of New York Fashion. Rise of New York Fashion. But it's located in the Rise New York exhibition. That's the only place you can see it. Hey, Karen! Uh, three times in a row you've been spotted. Yes, I was spotted a whole lot here. Uh, and there was an entire family out there. <laughs> I had an audience so shortly before I read. Good timing. It worked out really well, says JT. It did. Uh, I, I am a little bit afraid that Broadway's going to close fully again. I hope not, personally. Um, but... The reason Hamilton wasn't picked randomly was because Hamilton, I think, closed and a few others. I think uh, the other one I really wanted to see was Freestyle Love Supreme. Do they still have the TKTS booth? Yeah, TKTS booth is another way to get cheaper tickets. Uh, you get to choose the show, but you have to line up. Broadway Roulette is all an app, so I kind of like the convenience of the app. You do run at the risk of seeing a show you might not want to see too much. But if you just love musical theater in general, then I would recommend it. It's a fun time. Actually, it could be a really fun time, especially if you're on a date or with a significant other. It's kind of uh, adventurous to go to a random show or you're by yourself. If we're, you're with kids, then, <laughs> then maybe not. <laughs> maybe you want to have a little bit more control. Do you have an Airbnb in Times Square? I do not have an Airbnb in Times Square. Um, do you feel like Lincoln in the theater? Uh, no, I do not. <laughs> Ariel has a new haircut. Indeed, I do, Faith. Uh, thank you so much, George and Ron, for tuning in. And Matt. Matt, thank you so much for the extra uh, tidbits. How many times have you visited this that theater? First time I've been into the New Amsterdam Theater. I've really wanted to go ever since I started doing Haunted History videos. And I learned about the ghost of Olive Thomas. So this is the first time. I've been to... Many Broadway shows, first time I actually end up going to a theater. And it was awesome. In my opinion, the New Amsterdam Theater is the best theater I've been to in terms of decor. Not in terms of comfort, but in terms of decor on Broadway, it's the best. In terms of comfort and uh, beauty and elegance is the Metropolitan Opera. Is there mastication tonight? No, there's no, no mastication tonight. Uh, <laughs> no food segment tonight. I'll answer any last questions about Broadway. Feel free to ask me anything about Broadway. Pro tip with Broadway, show up early right now because they're checking vaccination passes. They stamp you. They stamp me with a genie. And, um, and I highly recommend going. Nina says, it's all behind you now. What's all behind me now? There's nothing. I am indeed, yes. How's it going? <laughs> I'm live streaming too. Very nice of you. Uh, people are weird. Do you do what you can? 
and loved by all followers. I think people are watching behind. You didn't find orchestra seats too loud? Not in this show. I have not been to a show where it's been too loud. No, no, never been to a show that's been too loud, luckily. No. Only concern with the show, be careful if you have photo sensitivity. Aladdin does have bright lights. And this is the case with a lot of Broadway musicals. If you have photo sensitivity issues, either wear sunglasses to the theater, which could be a good alternative. Don't worry about looking weird. Um, or go to a play. Play, a lot of plays don't have uh, bright lights. Aladdin has a, the least amount that I've seen on Broadway. Hudson Theater has huge seats, says Kelly. Ooh, good to know. That's awesome. RIP to Broadway. I hope it still continues. I hope it doesn't close out nowhere. That would, that would be terrible. What does off-Broadway mean? Off-Broadway means a smaller theater. And um, there is off-Broadway in the Broadway area. In the theater district, there's a few off-Broadway theaters. So it's a certain amount of seats. If anyone can remind me what's the amount of seats. And that's off-Broadway. And then there's off-off-Broadway, which is technically just very little amount of seats, which there is all around New York. There is no official Broadway theater in outside of the Broadway area, I think. I think there might be only one. There is, I think there's only one theater that has more than 400 seats outside of the theater district. If anyone can remind me which one it is. Uh, I'm not sure if the Metropolitan Opera would be considered Broadway. I don't think it is. I'm, happy, um, I'm off tonight and uh, glad to watch your stream. Merry Christmas. Under 400 seats is considered off-Broadway. Thank you so much, Josh. Appreciate that. The Who put on a loud show. How long was the entire show? About two hours. Uh... <laughs> About two hours. <laughs> Times Square is so huge, and yet uh, people seem to not have space to find to take a photo. <laughs> There's so much space in Times Square, and yet this gentleman is right behind me. The Belasco Theater is haunted too. Yeah, the Belasco is one place I would really love to visit. Uh, can you bring your own wine in the theater? No. Uh, they do check your bags, um, and I would recommend not doing so. Uh, there was no drinks sold in the theater, I think, because of the pandemic. Usually there are. And usually the cocktails are fairly weak and very expensive. Um, so if you like seeing the show slightly under the influence, then I would recommend uh, having a drink or two before. Under, nine, under 99 is off off Broadway, says Marcy. 400, uh, 100 to 499 is off Broadway. Over 500 is Broadway. Thank you so much. 500 seats. Uh, I'm visiting New York City for the first time next month. Any advice? How's the weather? New York City gets very cold in January. Bring lots of layers. Um, rather than just one gigantic layer, have a coat, a coat or a jacket, and have a few layers underneath. A hoodie, a cardigan, uh, long johns, or uh, thick t-shirts. Be sure to have a few layers. And then be sure to bring shoes that are adaptable for snow, in case it snows. So don't wear pristine leather shoes. I would recommend against it. Uh, sneakers will do you well, but if it snows, then uh, be prepared to have some boots. Just in case. I would recommend having sneakers that could double as boots. Show you must see before leaving New York, says Yenny. I would recommend Hamilton if you can. It's very hard to see Hamilton. Uh, so I would say go see at least one Broadway musical, but I would say Phantom of the Opera. It's a classic. The seats are not going to be super expensive. It's amazing. See Phantom of the Opera. You'll deeply, deeply enjoy it. And Mary says, uh, happy for all information. I'm going to New York for the first time. Any advice? Oh yeah, I already mentioned. Is that guy sleeping in the background? Yeah, a lot, there's so much sleep. Everyone, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, use uh, promo code Ariel5 for Broadway Roulette if you want $5 off. Uh, that was an awesome app. 
I'll be using it myself in the future. There's a few other great apps out there. Uh, I'll mention them in other broadcasts. But I was trying to spotlight on them for this one. And uh, check out my TikTok. I'll post it. Ariel Vera is my TikTok. I'll be posting it soon of uh, the entire Broadway experience. You'll see a little bit more inside the theater. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome. And always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Dun, dun.